Coming up on today's episode of the Hot Zone Podcast, day four in Nigeria. We go to a marketplace and a couple of very interesting things I'm learning about the difference between Boko Haram and the Fulani. That's all coming up right now. This is the Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Hey folks, Chuck Holton here. Welcome to the Hot Zone podcast. I'm in Nigeria all week this week, and I'm doing three different stories. Like I said, we're talking about the internet scammers. We're talking about the Christian persecution in Nigeria and we're talking about the, the trouble with Boko Haram. Now, there's some overlap there because uh, the Christians in uh, Nigeria are really getting it from two different sides. They're being killed by Boko Haram, wherever Boko Haram happens to be, and they're also being persecuted by a group of tribesmen called the Fulani, the Fulani herders. They're herdsmen, uh, traditionally. And I interviewed uh, somebody who is from a partially Fulani family today, who talked a little bit about the differences between the Fulani and Boko Haram. My name is John Sali Kaluma. Sali is my Islamic name. K-A-L-M-A. That's K-A-L-M-A, yes. Okay, so um, explain to me how your family is connected to the Fulani tribe. Uh, I am from a family that uh, my mom is fully Fulani. My dad is from an ethnic group, married from a Fulani race, and I was born into a somehow mixed uh, tribe or ethnic, but uh, I have a very strong link through my mom with Fulani. And even my dad, the culturally also there's that closeness. Fulani tribe is uh, basically they are herdsmen. They go, they take care of their cows. They settle down in one particular place. They don't have a permanent settlement. Until when you are getting older, the, the younger ones will ensure that they have a place for you. That's why they call it uh, Ruga, where they will permanently settle the elderly people, while the younger ones go after their cows to wherever they can go and come back. You know, they move in search of grazing areas and after some time they come back to also look on, uh, check on their elderly ones. Uh, it is a community that is governed by a very, very close tie together. They, they, they believe in themselves, they trust themselves, they usually will not be open to any other uh, persons except themselves because that understanding has been built and enshrined in their culture. Now, there are categories of Fulanis. There are those who purely go after cows. They are husbands. There are those we call over the years they have been able to stabilize and mingle with other tribes and other communities. They, still, they are still Fulani by birth and by their behavior, but they have a lot of uh, mixture in, the behavior, in their way of life. So they, they, they connect with those herdsmen, but they are more of these are the people that uh, have an opportunity to be educated. They went to school, they were able to send their children to school. Now they come back, but they still link up and they ensure that they, 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 that culture, Fulani culture, is intact. Though they are no longer the same with those who are totally out there with their cows. So these are the ones that have been politically uh, uh, sensitized and uh, they organize themselves and they are taking advantage also of telling those who are herdsmen that we are together. So the herdsmen are the ones that commit all kinds of atrocity while these guys take advantage and uh, 
uh, enjoy their political affiliation okay. and benefits. Yeah. Boko Haram and Fulani, they are two separate organizations. And as much as they are two separate uh, culture and uh, tribe, but somehow they have come together to unleash mayhem on the generality of the society. So it was really interesting to kind of get a sense of the, the differences there because uh, I think that you get a really simplistic view of what's happening in, with Boko Haram, for example, in Nigeria. Most people, when they think Nigeria, most people in the United States think probably either internet scams like the email scams and all that sort of thing, or they, they think about Boko Haram and the Chaibok girls, those students that were uh, kidnapped back in 2014. Well, there, it's a whole lot more complex, and that's one of the reasons that I come here. It's one of the reasons why I do this podcast, because in, if I've got four minutes in a news piece to explain the differences to you, I'm not going to be able to do a very good job. But by doing my own podcast, I can take however much time I need to really give you a sense of what's going on and how it pertains to you. Uh, and when it comes to the Christians that are being persecuted in Nigeria, that complexity comes down to the difference between uh, a terror group that's been around for a long, long time called Boko Haram. That's they're, they're basically saying Western education is a sin. That's what Boko Haram is all about. They want to institute Sharia law very much like ISIS did in Syria. They want to carve out a caliphate. They want to carve out some space where they can institute Sharia law and, and have life be the way they want it to be, which is obviously a pretty dismal life for anybody that lives under that. Uh, the other group is a, is a traditional group of, or, or tribe of herdsmen. These are people who herd cattle uh, around uh, the kind of central belt up into the northeast of Nigeria called the Fulani. They're traditionally kind of uh, nomadic. They don't really settle down much, as we heard there from John. Uh, but that difference kind of ends when it comes to their religious beliefs. Uh, the Fulani uh, tribe is not, as a tribe, Muslim. There are Christian Fulani, but they're majority Muslim. And that form of Islam that they take is Sunni Islam. Same thing with Boko Haram. Boko Haram is a Sunni organization, just like ISIS. And that's why Boko Haram aligns itself with ISIS and the Fulani tribesmen have some sympathies, let's say, if they don't outright ally themselves with Boko Haram, they have some sympathies there because they're also Sunni Muslims. And that's where I think Americans kind of maybe offend the Nigerian sensibilities a little bit because recently uh, on the Christian Broadcasting Network, we did a story about uh, a, a young woman who was captured, one of the students captured by Boko Haram, taken prisoner. And when all of the rest of them were released, she was kept as a slave. And the reason she was kept as a slave is because she's a Christian. Her name is Leah, uh, Leah Sharabu. Uh, she was kept uh, enslaved there because she refused to renounce Christianity. And the, the government of Nigeria felt like in that report, we didn't differentiate between the fact that Boko Haram is a terrorist organization, that indeed the government of, uh, of Nigeria is working very hard, expending a lot of resources to defeat, to fight against. When the Christians in Nigeria are also being persecuted by the Fulani tribesmen, and the, the president of Nigeria is a Fulani tribesman, that doesn't mean that he advocates for this violence, but it, unfortunately he has not come out against it. And so there's an assumption being made sometimes that the government is on the side of, of Boko Haram and ISIS, and that's not true. They're not on the side of Boko Haram, or Haram and ISIS, but they have not come out and denounced the violence from the Fulani tribesmen who are also Sunni Muslim. And because of that, the assumption is being made that that they support that violence. And I think what the government of Nigeria needs to do, if they, uh, obviously they don't need to take advice from me, but if they were to take advice from me, I would tell them, all you have to do is make it clear that you denounce violence from anywhere. You denounce violence from Christians, you denounce violence from Muslims, you denounce violence from cattle, anything. If you denounce the violence wholeheartedly across the board, then you avoid being painted with such a broad brush. 
And that's, I think, the lesson that the Nigerian government needs to learn here. Here's some more of what I saw today. So there have been these ongoing protests from the Shiite minority here in Abuja. They've gone on for quite some time over the arrest of their leader. And he was being, he's being held in prison. He was supposed to be released. He hasn't been released. They've been protesting and very angry about all that. And then the, the police or the soldiers come and start shooting. And that happened right near here just a couple days ago. The death toll is now up to seven people. There have been probably a hundred injuries, uh, gunshot wounds and things like that. And uh, it's really got this city riled up because they're worried about all this violence that's happening. That's not just, uh, you know, it's not racially motivated, obviously. It's just between different sects of uh, Islam and Boko Haram actually exploded a bomb in front of the shopping center right back behind me back in 2015. Uh, so that, that kind of violence is not what Nigerians want to see, obviously. So they're calling on their government to do something about it. So I'm here with the CBN driver, Jerry, and I was asking him about Nigeria. And this is interesting. Uh, you know, I found Nigeria to be a very polite, uh, peaceful country. Uh, the, the people themselves are very peaceable people and um, super polite, super nice. Uh, so very conservative uh, in the Christian communities and then of course more even more conservative probably in the Muslim communities uh, but I was just asking Jerry if uh, a prayer is allowed in schools and what would you tell me? Yeah, they allow prayers in schools you can pray nobody disturbs you No problem No problem And if the headmaster of the school wants to pray Yeah Nobody yeah. says Oh, I'm offended that I had to pray. No, 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 no. They, they don't do that, huh? And uh, what about abortion? Is abortion legal in... No. In the, abortion's illegal? No, it's illegal, yeah. Uh -huh. How about gay marriage? Is gay marriage allowed? No, it's not allowed. It's not? No. They wanted to uh, put it into law in the year 2014, but the then president, good luck, Jonathan, refused it. So we are grateful to him for doing that. So uh, the Obama administration was pressuring countries around the world to adopt same-sex marriage. And conservative Christian countries, uh, by and large, refused. And Nigeria was one of those. So uh, like you say, the Christians at least, and I'm sure the Muslims too, are grateful uh, for that, that they resisted that. But there was a lot of pressure put on them. And that kind of goes back to this controversy we've seen recently about... Uh, the American embassies flying the gay pride flag and things like that. There are countries like this where doing something like that is extremely offensive to the local culture. Uh, and try, it, it, it doesn't just smack of America trying to, uh, you know, grandstand and, and, and push its uh, social values on other countries. It doesn't smack of that. It is that. It is America trying to, you know, push those uh, sort of sordid moral values on countries that really don't want to have anything to do with it. All right, folks, that's all we got for today. Uh, appreciate you being with us. I appreciate all the feedback I've been getting on Facebook from the photographs and stuff we've been putting up and the support. People are sending money. We're taking that money and we're using it to help people that we're coming across. And there's one guy I want to show you. I saved it for the end because it's amazing. This guy is uh, obviously very handicapped but he's not letting that slow him down. Take a look. One of the things you see a lot of in Africa are disabilities that are, we would consider to be pretty horrendous and they just don't have the treatment options here that they have elsewhere in the United States, in the Western world. So uh, they're just relying on charity. And I like this guy here because you can tell he is making something of himself despite his, back, his difficulties. Hey man, that's amazing. I've never seen anybody right with their foot. You're very talented. Thank you, sir. What's your name? My name is Ahmed Yaqub. Uh huh. How old are you? From Bigasso. From where? Bigasso. Uh huh. How old are you? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Mm. Yeah. And are you studying, or what are you writing? I'm writing. This is Hausa language. Hausa language. Yeah. 
And what are you, what are you writing? A letter? You're writing what? I'm learning English. You're learning English. Wow, I'm very proud of you. That's great. How long have you lived in Abuja? How 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 long have you lived here? I lived in Abuja. One year. Well, I think God has big plans for you because you are very you're very talented. So God bless you. Thank you, sir. Okay. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.